I'm here as a, as a citizen of Seattle, and I'm speaking in favor of the resolution. And I just want to say um, thank you for listening and taking time. Um, this movement is a very interesting thing for me, and I haven't, I didn't come here prepared to speak at all. In fact, I kind of just out on my day job. And I'm someone that's never participated in the actual government process before, so this is new to me. And I think I'm probably not alone. I'm just guessing. Um, maybe I'm stereotyping and just assuming, but I'm just guessing. But um, so I want to thank you for listening, for opening up everything, and um, specifically to you um, for proposing the resolution. Um, the one thing that I want to add to the list of comments that have been made so far, all of which I pretty much support, is that um, I've realized through participating in Occupy Seattle the fragility and the limits of and the misunderstanding of the notions of freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. And I feel like we see them challenged in a lot of ways. And I just want to encourage you to recognize when they are challenged. And I want to encourage everyone here to recognize when freedom of speech and assembly are challenged and really think about where people are putting limits on them and where your limits are with it. And maybe swap places and say, how would I feel if I were trying to express myself and people with guns were showing up? And what would that mean? All right, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, my name is Forrest Hawes. I'm here to testify in favor of the resolution that Nick Lakata introduced. Thank you, council members, for opening the opportunity for all of us to work together. Thank you, Councilman uh, Licata, for er taking an early stand in support of economic democracy, for introducing this resolution, and thank you again to all of you for giving us your reflection, your consideration, and for passing this resolution. I am a man who tries to take and does take an active role in society. As I told you last week, I'm a member of the National Committees of Correspondence, a member of Occupy Seattle, one of the magnets of the Internet Communications Team, Chief Executive Officer of Tech Praxis Systems, and in general, a three major impossible academic load at the University of Washington in geophysics, anthropology, and public policy. So I have many hats. I don't sleep enough. <laughs> what I wish to say to you this week is that each of you sits at the nexus of responsibility. Let's take that word apart for a second. The ability to respond in a poetic sense. This movement is the emanation of ordinary citizens of Seattle's desire to be involved, to take an active role together as human beings in their society. Now being a public servant, as each of you is, and each of you I'm sure is acutely aware of different dimensions of that responsibility, and confronting and relating in your own political configuration, how you got elected, who you're responsible for, how you do or do not fulfill those responsibilities in your own heart. Occupy Seattle is an opportunity for each of you and together to engage in a collaborative public process to explore the future of governance in this wonderful Emerald City. Thank you. I hope to work closely with you in the future. Thank you. Be Michael Dare, followed by Chris Hamanix and Bradford Morrison. And that's the end of the sign up sheets. Hi, my name is Michael Dare, and my address is City Hall. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have any money in a credit union because I don't have any money. <laughs> I have fallen through the cracks. I'm too young for Social Security. I'm not disabled enough for SSI. And so I find myself out of work and homeless when Mayor McGinn made his offer to occupy the plaza downstairs, and I've been there ever since. I came to be a political activist, but ended up running a homeless shelter. Uh, the homeless movement and the Occupy Seattle movement are joined at the hips, and they are mine. Mm -hmm. While working downstairs, I discovered a whole new type of homeless that I'd never experienced before. Because it turns out that trickle-down economics works. <laughs> it's just not money that's trickling down, it's people. People from the lower class are trickling down into homelessness. 
People from the middle class are trickling down into the lower class, discovering there's no safety net and going splat right down into homelessness. And I see these people every day down there and they're lost and they don't know what to do. Because it turns out that life is like joining a game of Monopoly in the middle. Every property is already owned and wherever you land, you're screwed. <laughs> I would like to see the rules change. I would like to see a level playing field, and I think this city council is capable of achieving that. I would like you to show America that social justice can trickle down, that peace and prosperity can trickle down, and that compassion can trickle down. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Max. I'm here as an individual and a private citizen, citizen of King County. Um, I, I just want to say Portland is a pretty cool town, but we really knocked the socks off of Portland, just to say. <laughs> um, and I, I'd like to say that on the outset that before we, until we change the way that money works, we will change nothing. And so this resolution is a good first step at that. Um, and speaking about money, I think we should all look at the police overexpense. Um, this is a nonviolent movement, and there are some individuals that uh, have been rowdy, but by and large, the 99% of the over 99% of the 99% is nonviolent, and will continue to be nonviolent. Will always be nonviolent, and that's the only way to change the way that money works and everything else. Um, I also encourage having a dialogue with the police um, because they're the 99% too, they have pensions. Um, all politics are ultimately local and as times get darker, um, we look to you and you should look to us, the citizens, so we can work together and stick together in these troubling times. Um, Occupy Seattle and the Occupy movement nationally, uh, not to mention globally, um, seeks a redress of grievances, which is afforded by this document. Uh, this is the Constitution of the United States. I know, a rare book. Um, and we, as other people mentioned, we provide services to homeless, um, to anybody that walks up, regardless of who they are. Um, and uh, those services are increasingly going away. And uh, we, we need to address the social needs of, of all of us um, before we don't have any time left. And I, I'd like to say uh, this document here has been being passed around at the camp, and I suggest you all go down um, during the day. It's, it's a safe place to be. It's an engaging place. There's a lot of different people. Um, the question is, what will it take us to get fired up enough to acknowledge the state of the world and decide to make a change? Is it a lifelong habit of being pacified, or perhaps a fear of speaking your mind? Are you waiting for the destruction or corruption to jump off the TV screen and into your life? The time is now. Without fundamental, systematic change, it will be too late. It is not too far-fetched to say that under our current system, democracy, sustainability, and justice are endangered and rapidly dying. Could you wrap up, please? Sure. That's why people are starting to speak up. And so, should you, if you care about this world, yourself, or anything true or just, act now, because I promise you will regret your apathy later. Direct action and conversation does make a change. Believe in your soul and that your participation is the only way to change our collective course. Thank you. Thank you.